I'm just frozen when I get behind a podium. It's like, ah. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about Samurai WTF, which does absolutely stand for Web Training Framework. We did not have any ulterior motives when we came up with that acronym. We did not come up with the acronym first and then figure out what words fit it, of course. Uh, I will also point out that it has two sister projects, both of which were never really built very far. One was Samurai STFU, and the other one was Samurai RTFM. Uh, again, totally did not come up with the acronyms first. Uh, the STFU distribution was for SCADA systems, and the RTFM distribution was for forensics, uh, right? But so, <laughs> Justin and I spent many late nights not sleeping and working on stuff. So this is how most open source projects get built. Lack of sleep, bad senses of humor, and boredom, right? Uh, just... You have a problem, you want to fix it, you're bored with other things, and so you build an open source project. At least that's how I've built them. So who am I? I'm Kevin. I'm not that excited about being Kevin. I've been Kevin for 51 years. I've been Kevin Johnson for 18 less than that. Uh, you do the math, I'm not gonna. I'm a developer, not smart. Um, I run Secure Ideas, I'm an IONS faculty. I am an OWASP Global Board member. I was elected last year. Whoever voted for me was foolish. Um, but we're trying to accomplish stuff, right? And I run open source projects. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. They can see the slides. <laughs> they don't need to see me. I'm funny looking. So I do lots of different things. I speak around. I, I, I like to be able to say now, I've been to Portugal, so i a world speaker, right? Been in Australia once also, so I've, I've covered everything or something, right? So let's talk about Samurai because that's what we're here for. Right? We're going to talk about the history. We're going to talk about the features that currently exist and are about to be released by Samurai. And then we're going to talk about what we want to do with it into the future. Because I may be biased. Okay, I am. But I believe that Samurai WTF is an excellent pl platform for education. Right? A lot of people, Samurai's original purpose was web pen testing. And then as time progressed, we realized that it was better as an education platform on assessing tools. So it's been around for a while. Point one came out, I want to say it was August 10th, 2008, right? And the reason it came out was because I didn't make it to DEF CON. I was working for Ingardians, uh, wanted, was going to go to DEF CON, everything was great. Uh, my family left town because I wasn't going to be there, so they went down to see family members. And then right before I was supposed to go to DEF CON, a client got hacked. I was supposed to go on site to do forensics and incident response, right? take drive images, stuff like that. Um, they could not get it all arranged to get me there, so I had a weekend home alone uh, in Jacksonville, Florida. And so what did I do? I built a Linux distribution. Fancied it up a little bit, published it for people to play with, just as more of a joke than anything else. It was not an OWASP project at that time. It was just me bored one weekend, right? So I did the release. I got an email from somebody a few hours later that they had downloaded it and they couldn't figure out how to log in. I told them to use the username and password. They asked me what it was. I may or may not have responded. Well, if you're a hacker, you could get in anyways. Um... I had forgotten to tell people that the username and password was Samurai. So I had a brilliant idea. I did a second release, 0 0.2. And in this case, I built the environment, and it's a live CD at that point, right? It was an ISO that was self-booting. And so I built a readme and put the username and password in the readme, and I put the readme on the desktop, and I generated the ISO, and I uploaded it. It took about a half an hour, I think, for somebody to email me and say, hey, what's the username and password? And I said, it's in the readme. And they said, where's the readme? And I said, on the desktop. I see the problem. So 0 0.3 came out very soon after that and now had a readme with the ISO. <laughs> Not that good at running these projects. I don't know why you all keep letting me do it. Okay. So this was the first release that people could actually log into without you know asking me for the username and password. It then progressed from there. Justin Searle, a coworker at the time, helped me with the project, started building it out. The two of us started running it. Uh, I want to say around 2010, 
but I'm honestly not sure, and I can't get a date stamp uh, that I trust to tell me when it became an OWASP project. It literally became an OWASP project because Justin Searle was at the Global ASSEC event, was talking to somebody, and they said, why is that not an OWASP project? And he said, I don't know. Why isn't it? And it became an OWASP project. Um, I, the project lead, found out it became a pro an OS project because Google sent me an alert that Samurai WTF was mentioned on the OS website. That's how I found out. So I said to Justin, who was at Global OpSec, hey man, did you submit our project to OWASP? He's like, oh yeah, I meant to tell you about that. <laughs> I was like, oh cool. So that's how I became an OWASP project lead. Not the path I recommend to anybody else. Right? So we've been doing releases over the last few years. The original version of Samurai used a tool called Remaster Sys to build out the ISO, right? So you would build out an environment, run Remaster Sys, and it would generate a bootable ISO that you could burn to a CD or load into a VM or whatever. Uh, Samurai grew. Uh, we started adding tools, vulnerable targets, because that's what it is, right? It is a collection of tools vulnerable targets, and training materials, right? That's Samurai. Started growing. All of a sudden, it became a bootable DVD. Then it got to the point where SquashFS wasn't able to contain all of the content, so it became a virtual machine that you downloaded. That has also grown, and having people download 90 gig virtual machines is not the best distribution path. So a few years ago, we switched to Vagrant to build it. And so now Samurai is really a collection of tools that build a training environment, right? And up until about two years ago, uh, it would build a virtual machine or it would build an AWS EC2 instance or an instance up in Azure, right? Now you can still build the VMs but Samurai is geared toward building into a cloud provider, right? We currently support AWS and Azure. We're working on GCP support. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time building stuff for GCP, so I'm learning it as I build it, which is not the most efficient use of my time. So when we get to contributing, if somebody knows GCP and wants to build it there, come on board, right? Because we would like to support as many different cloud environments as possible. All right? So... This is Samurai, really fancy. It's a live environment, right? You boot it up, it has menus, it has command line tools, everything else, right? This is not that interesting. Bluntly, it's a Linux environment. And the current version of Samurai can actually be built into a Windows machine or any distribution of Linux that supports the toolkits it has, right? That's the one of the nice things about Vagrant is you just change the base box that is running to. And we now have a tool called Katana. Katana is part of the Samurai project. Katana is a tooling installer. It has a CLI and a web interface. I prefer the CLI, but that's because I'm old and nerdy. The web interface works pretty well, right? And literally what you do is you open up a terminal and you say Katana space, and then you have a series of commands. You can do list, which will list the tools and vulnerable targets that it can install. You also have start, stop, install, remove. Please don't ask me why one's installed and the other one's remove. We weren't paying attention. Um, so, uh, But Katana is a tool that runs this. You also have, like I said, the web interface. So if you do katana start katana, which sounds dumb to say out loud and even dumber to type. But when you do that, it actually launches a web server that is running the katana web UI. And you're able to see the tools. And then you'll notice, right, it actually says uh, status is running off to the side. In this case, I don't know why the screenshot, oh, it looks like it's broken. There's a bug. Um, there should be a stop uh, sign to stop that running web server. You can also, if you scroll down, these are the vulnerable targets. Down below that are tools. So zap, burp, nikto, blah, 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 nmap, whatever. 
And then below that are core services. All of the vulnerable targets are Docker containers. So obviously Docker has to be installed. Katana will install that for you if you don't have that installed on the machine you've built this into, right? So if you pull down Katana onto your Windows machine, run Katana install, it'll actually pull down Docker and install that if you don't have that, right? It's all designed to have the tools you need to assess things and the targets you need to learn how to do all of this type of testing. Whether it's pen testing or you're a developer and you're trying to figure out how to test your own stuff. Because bluntly, you should be testing your own stuff. We know that, right? So that's what Samurai is geared toward, okay? Now, Katana is a neat little tool. Uh, one of the big things, as we'll talk about in a second, that we really want people to focus on is building out a further list of things it can install, okay? Um, this is the current version. This code is not yet publicly released. This should be released sometime in the next 30 days. We're cleaning it up and making it so that it's stable. You know, you know how you build something for yourself and it works exactly how you want it in your environment, on your stuff, and everything's fine? That's what this is. This is Shogun. It works perfectly for us. <laughs> Okay, not perfectly, pretty damn well. We're cleaning it up and building it out and then we're gonna release it for everybody else. Shogun is designed to build classroom environments using Samurai. Because currently, if you download Samurai, you install it onto a machine, it is a one machine install. It works for you. Yeah, you can modify the Nginx configs on the vulnerable targets and stuff like that so that they listen on the network. Probably not a good idea because, you know, it's a vulnerable targets, right? GitHub tells me once a week about all the vulnerabilities it finds in my code. And I can't figure out a way to tell GitHub that it's a vulnerable app. So those vulnerabilities are known. We also regularly get bug bounty reports, we don't have a bug bounty program, but you know, security researchers, um, where they will tell us that our target apps are vulnerable to SQL injection and cross-site scripting and things like that. And I will tell you that I giggle a little bit when a security researcher sends me an email that the page sqlinjection.php is vulnerable to SQL injection. Uh, I will also admit that quite often I'll write back and ask them what their first sign of that was. Um, you know, where it says at the top of the page, this page is vulnerable to SQL injection, uh, might be a target, a trigger. Yeah, like, oh my God, I found it. Uh, not much of a researcher at that point, but that's okay, right? We get those reports regularly. Please don't add to them. <laughs> like, some people think it's funny, they write me, all it does is irritate me, <laughs> so please don't, right? But we have all these targets out here. The problem with that, like I said, is it's for a single machine. So what Shogun is designed to do is, right now Shogun works on AWS, okay? You run it with a list of students, and it generates a set of target environments per student. Right now, you can run 20 per cluster. Once you get above 20, you start having some problems uh, with the deployment. We haven't figured out why, but you just run it into different clusters, right? So you batch them out 20 at a time. It ties into, like I said, it works with AWS. It ties into Cognito, and builds out a user pool. The student is able to sign in, right? They're granted access to their cluster and their source IP is added to the allow list so that we don't have a bunch of vulnerable apps that are just listening out on the internet on AWS, right? Now, of course, I'm not claiming they're secure. I am saying we have done the best we can not to have these sitting out there, right? Um, and then the goal is that you'll be able to stand up an entire classroom, which is what we actually do this for our training that we offer, um, we spin up classrooms in the cloud, and why that is really good, in our opinion, is many times people are trying to train their developers, right? Now let me ask you a question. How many of you work for a corporation that 
is perfectly fine with you installing vulnerable apps and hacker tools on the desktop of every developer. Probably not many, right? So by pushing this out to a cloud provider that moves that risk from the corporate machines or the organizational machines out onto the cloud. You still have other issues, things like that you have to deal with, right? But at least it's moving some of that. Make sense? So that's Shogun. That should be released in the next 30 days. Uh, here are a collection of apps. Uh, two of these, so DVWA, Dam Vulnerable Web App, uh, has been around for a while. Uh, Dojo Basic is Samurai's vulnerable app. It was the original vulnerable app we built. We actually took an existing app, forked it, modified it for Samurai, and deployed it. We also have Dojo Scavenger, which is a halfway decent CTF web app that is vulnerable. And what we're building out now and is out there is Wayfair. Right now, Wayfair is a fully baked ticketing system with GraphQL and RESTful APIs. It is designed to be a realistic ticketing application. What we are working on is turning it into an entire intranet so that when you test it, you are testing an internal organization with the standard typical apps that you find with vulnerabilities. Because our goal as we move forward, when you look at something like DVWA, when you like DVWA, the files literally are named CSRF.php and XSS.php. Dojo Basic does it a little bit better than that, right? It has a blog that is vulnerable to cross-site scripting and other types of attacks. It has this, but it's still a pretty piss poor application. And while those vulnerabilities are the vulnerabilities we see in real apps, they don't look realistic to people, right? Because the app is so simple. So the goal is that when you first start learning, you use DVWA, right? Or RSpace, or Matildi, or, because there's a lot of vulnerable apps in this thing. You learn on that environment because it's very obvious where the vulnerabilities are. So your learning is more focused on understanding how they work and how the attacks happen and stuff like that. Then you move into something like Dojo Basic, where you are learning how to test for those vulnerabilities that you learned in DVWA. And then once you've got that down, you move into something like Wayfair, where it's a realistic app, and now you're learning how to do it with the systems that you would see. Make sense? The goal is a fully baked education path. Currently inside of Samurai, there is a fully open source three-day course that you can take. All of the slides are there, all of the exercises are there, and it uses uh, Samurai WTF as the platform. That is a three-day class. It's two days of training materials and a capture the flag. That is the third day. We are about to release. It has already been published, but we're actually rebranding it and submitting it up to OWASP. Uh, we are releasing a six-day class that is completely open source. Um, it's a web pen testing course that we own and we're pushing out so everybody else can maintain it and help us make it so that everybody can use it. Both of those open source classes, this is something that confuses people. We tell you that you can't use it commercially. What we mean by that is we don't want you standing up a public class and charging people to take the class. But if you work at a company and you want to train people in the company, that's not commercial use in this license. That is a legitimate use of this license. Okay, So you can use the three or six day class however you want as long as you aren't billing people for coming to the class. You start billing people for coming to class, don't be a dick. Right? It's that simple. Right? That training material is all available inside the Samurai project. Right? So what are we doing with it? What's the future? Well, lots of stuff. I personally believe that application assessments, whether it's as a, you know, an, a professional hacker or as a developer who's testing their stuff or as somebody who just likes doing bug bounties correctly so, not the way we see a lot of times or whatever, I think that application testing of all types has to get better. We know that. OWASP has been around for 20 plus years. 
and we still find people every day that have never heard of it, right? OWASP has been around for 20 plus years, is referenced in every standard out there, and we have less than 82 members, 8,200 members, right? We have to get better. We have to fix this stuff. As Shruti was saying in her presentation quite well, is that these problems, these vulnerabilities that applications expose are just screwing people over. People are getting hurt. So we have to get better at testing them. We have to get better at understanding. That's what I want Samurai to be able to do. I want Samurai to be the way people learn how to test their own stuff. And to do that, we have to expand past just web applications. Samurai currently has vulnerable apps that are web-based, API-based. We have GraphQL apps. We have uh, containerized apps that are designed to help you test containerized apps. And we are working on uh, browser agents. We're working on thick clients. We're working like all training materials. We have started working with another group to start building out ICS and SCADA apps inside of Samurai so that you can learn how to test these as well. The goal is to be able to test any application, any type, anywhere, based on what you learned for free and openly from Samurai WTF. That's my goal, right? Yes, sir. I have a quick answer. What programming languages am I using for what? Ah, let's talk about that next. You saw my next slide, didn't you? <laughs> so, now we want to talk about cont contributions. Look, I've been running this project since 2008. This is one of probably 30 different open source projects, 25 different open source projects that I have either led or taken part of over the last three decades. I'm a nerd and I like building open source stuff, right? Here's the biggest problem we have, and I guarantee you that the vast majority of projects you see on OWASP have the exact same problem. People don't know how to contribute. People don't think they can. People don't think they should. People don't think they have the skill set. The number of times that I talk to people and I say, look, we're running Samurai WTF. We'd love to have you help. And they say, oh, but I don't know how to develop. Or I'm not that good as a developer. Look, I've been doing development professionally since 1991, and I'm not good at it, right? It's just that simple. Plus, development isn't the only way to contribute to projects. It's actually one of the smallest ways to contribute to most projects. Not all, but most. So what we're looking for is we want developers. We want developers who can help us build the systems we're doing. One of the things uh, is building vulnerable apps. Like I said, Wayfair, we want to build an entire intranet on Wayfair. Right? That's going to take a lot of development work. It's going to take UX design. It's going to take graphic design. It's going to take all of the stuff that developing normal applications take. The other thing that we need from developers, we need help building Katana to make it better, building Shogun to make it better. Right? These are tools that we have built that are open source to run this stuff. Like I said, Shogun currently works with AWS. I'd love Shogun to work with your internal virtualization, with your hosting provider, with GCP, with Azure, with whatever. Right? We have it working on AWS. Why? Because that's what we use. Right? Remember, open source almost always is built because some developer or person somewhere said, damn it, that doesn't work the way I need it to, and they built it. That's how Shogun came about, right? We had a problem, we fixed it for us. So it supports AWS, right? We need developers to help us with these things. We also want to help build tools that go into Samurai, right? Right now, we have a collection of tools that we've put so that you can say Katana install Zap. Katana install whatever. I would like every web assessment tool out there that is open source to have an installer in Katana. The goal for Katana is for you to be able to build your entire development and development assessment environment for training. Right? We need to be able to do that. I will tell you right now that building the tool installers, you don't need to be a developer. 
You do need to know how to use GitHub because you have to be able to do a pull request to submit it up to the Katana project. Please don't try to submit it to main. That doesn't work, right? We build development branches for that reason, <laughs> okay? But it's very simple to build an installer that's there. We ask that you test it out, make sure it works, and then submit a pull request, right? We also want to containerize all of the vulnerable apps. I will admit it. I'm an old nerd. Containers make zero sense to me. Every single time I containerize something, I struggle with it. And then it finally starts working. And many times, I don't know what the heck I did different that time, but it worked. And so I don't touch it again. <laughs> right? I would love people to help us with that. So we're not just using Kevin's band-aided version of containerization. Right? We also need target environments built. There's lots of vulnerable apps out there, and I don't mean let's just install move it. I mean things that were designed to purposely be vulnerable so that we could get them out there. Just like the tools, we'd like those in Katana and Shogun, right? And then we need people who can help us write. We want to release more and more training. This goes to your question. Currently, we do not teach secure coding in Samurai WTF. We don't. We just wasn't something we focused on. But we need to. We need to leverage the other open source projects that do this, right? In my opinion, and I can't believe I never thought about this until literally during Shruti's talk, I don't know why the developer guide isn't in Katana. So that you can just pull it down and build it into your environment. Right? Let's build that training. Let's write documentation. Let's get information out there so that people know what they're doing. Right? Because the goal here, for me, my opinion, my project, co-project lead, Jason Gillum's opinion, we want every aspect of software security to be trainable inside of Samurai WTA. Right? We've actually done secure code training inside of Samurai. We bring IDEs into it and run them through that. It works. Now we want to formalize that and release it. Make sense? So this entire presentation, other than just show off my baby, is to say we need help. We need contributors. This is what open source is, and we're asking you to help us. OK? That's Samurai WTF. Any questions? Yes, sir. I see your hand. I'll get you and then you. Yes. Nope. Nope. Yep. So the question was, the three and six take training, are they for more seasoned testers? And I said, no, it's not. They are designed to be introductory classes. If you've never assessed an application, it will teach you how to do it. Right? Yes, sir. I'm sorry? Do you have any testing? Yep. So the the question is, do we have anything specific to framework security, like a Django app, things like that? Yes, some of the vulnerable targets are geared toward a specific uh, vulnerable framework or what have you. The training materials does not, right? But the vulnerable apps do. And I think I saw a third hand up, but now I can't remember whose it was. Any other questions? Uh, no, I cannot do a demo right now because it's cloud-based and I'm not connected to this network. And since this is my work laptop, I'm not going to connect it to this network. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have tons of things out there on YouTube for Samurai WTF. Absolutely. Thank you. That's a good answer. Anything else? That was his idea, not mine. <laughs> yeah, he gave it. Sam gave you the idea. I just said we've already done it. We have lots of videos out there. Yeah, video training is really important, right? People like to see that. We, we also run free live trainings on these environments, right? So, anything else? Uh, what, what are the languages uh, that uh, the tools are written, like Katana? The, the, the developers uh, call what you do. Right now, most of the stuff we've got is written in Python. Python? Yep. So, no problem. Cool. Any other? 
Well, in that case, thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy yourself.